Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. I am coming on today to talk to you about um, Tarot Gelato um, by our good friend Mendy Dunn from the Artistry of Tarot on YouTube. Um, so, Tarot Gelato, Mendy created this um, herself based on the, uh, it was inspired by the Angelo Valla um, uh, Trieste Tarot. Um, which I think was created in the late 1700s, early 1800s, if I'm correct. Now, I'm not going to talk too much, um, because if you know me, you know I'm not a historical Marseille kind of a person. I, I don't I don't have a lot of knowledge to share on that. Um, what I do know, though, is that another deck that um, was based on the uh, Angel Valla tarot was... Um, the Marshmallow Marcy. So I thought it would be cool to just do a wee side by side um, and look at um, Mendy's um, TDM, which of course stands for Taro de Mendy. Um, no, look at Taro, uh, Taro Gelato alongside the Marshmallow Marcy. So let's flip the camera down and we will do a wee side by side flip through. So before I start doing the side by side, I first of all just wanted to kind of a comment on, you know, the usual, the uh, specifications, if you will. Um, Taro Gelato comes and you can either get it in plastic or the S30 smooth cardstock. Um, it's available on Make Playing Cards and I'll put a link in the description to where you can buy it. Um, it comes in this um, tin, um, so it's like a two part tin, which is pretty cool. It keeps the cards safe, um, you know, if you're going out with them, you can just shove this in your bag and nothing is going to happen to these cards in this tin. The card size, I believe, is a kind of a standard tarot uh, Smithwaite type size. Am I telling lies? No, I'm not. Um, yep, more or less the same size as a standard Smithwaite. Um, the card stock, so it's not as glossy as like my my pixie card here. Um, the cardstock is, well if you know the S30 then you'll know the cardstock. It's really nice, great for raffle shuffling. Okay, so here we have the Tarot Gelato next to the Marshmallow Marseille. Um, if you know the Marshmallow Marseille you know it's a fair bit smaller than a standard tarot size so this is that in comparison to Tarot Gelato. So I'll pop some music on and let's flip through the cards.
Okay guys, so to finish up, I like to always do a wee sample. I'm reading sample spread just to let you see the deck in action. Um, but first of all, let me show you what it's like to shuffle. So as I was saying, because it's this S30 smooth cardstock, it shuffles like an absolute dream, and particularly if you're a riffle shuffler. Um, so you can see you can get a really good kind of a mix on the, the riffle shuffle there, and listen to that sexy bridge shuffle. Um, so yeah, really good for shuffling that way and I do like to kind of a riffle shuffle the hell out of my decks because it's, I feel as though I'm getting them all nice and mixed up that way. Um, and of course overhand shuffling is as, as with any tarot deck so if you're cool shuffling a normal tarot deck then you'll be fine shuffling this one. Okay. So that's it all nice and shuffled up. Now the, the reading that I'm going to do, in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a bit just so as that we've got enough room on the table. Okay, so the reading that I'm going to do, um, I've got a close friend who um, is having a bit of a career um, you know, just needs a bit of a career reading. Um, not happy in the current job that they're in, um, and you know they've had some rejections in regards to um, jobs that they've applied for. So I'm going to um, throw some cards for that person um, and for that subject matter. So it's a bit of a career reading, I guess. Um, oh, that card obviously wanted to stay down there. Let's um, let's pop that there, and we'll see what that is at the end, shall we? I'll, um, I'll stick it there. Okay, so the the spread that I'm going to use, it's a 10 card spread and it's one that I use often. It's really good for kind of a getting advice as to what to do and what not to do and stuff. The first two cards um, is like the Celtic Cross. So it's the, the kind of a, the, the situation that we're looking at and the, the opposing factors, you know, the stuff that's going on. Um, so for the situation we do have the the valley of the coop or the page of cups um valley of cups however you want to call them and then for the, the kind of a crossing card which i'm putting like that i would normally have it crossing over but i'm going to do it like that so as you can see both of the cards uh, we've got the seven of swords um so you know the situation they, they're, they're kind of wanting to throw themselves into something new you know they're, they're they're looking for something new a new challenge um so we we do see the page coming out there which is the sign of a new beginning um or at least that's what they're seeking um maybe the fact that it's cups um the, the page of cups we sometimes associate with living in a bit of a dreamland you know maybe not quite seeing things as they really are um of all the pages um, I would tend to see the Page of Cups as being less um, seen things as they really are than than what perhaps the other pages would. Um, now, the the crossing card here, we've got the Seven of Swords. Um, so, the, the, the Seven of Swords for me is a... Seven is about, you know, breaking out from stability. It's about breaking outside your comfort zone. I'm conscious that my phone keeps buzzing, so I'm sorry if you guys are seeing that kind of a, that shaking. Um, it's breaking out of your comfort zone. It's growing from stability. Um, it's sometimes a bit about assessment as well. The swords were in the realm of the mind, you know, the intellect. Um, so this, for me, is a card about problem solving. Um, and it's uh, it encourages us to see the problem in different ways. Ways. Don't try and tackle this problem head on. This is one to maybe be a bit, um, a bit savvy about. Maybe a wee bit sneaky about. You know, not in the, not in a bad way, of course. But it's just telling you, you know, you're maybe going to want to think about going about this in a different way. Um, so you know, in order to. In order for this person to maybe get to where they want to be, maybe what this is suggesting is that right now, they're maybe kind of a waiting for that fish to jump out of the cup, you know, that they're, they're waiting for, um, you know, their, their dreams to come true, that kind of a thing, they're living in a wee bit of a fantasy, and they're going to have to look at the issue in a slightly different way, you know, maybe coming more from a sword, from an intellect point of view, maybe kind of a looking into it and real, um, you know, just, just looking at it um, rationally, I guess. Um, 
The next two cards are kind of the, the conscious and unconscious cards. So the conscious card kind of tells us what we know, it's what we're focused as just now, and we've got the Ten of Swords. So, I mean, I've, I've said this person is looking for a new job, so obviously that they've got something that they're they're not really happy with where they are just now, and they're looking to leave that behind, okay? So Tens for me are about renewal of the cycle. It's about something coming to an end, and, and it's about something new you know, starting as well, but right now you notice that we're in the 10 and we're not getting an A, so I suppose that makes sense because we are currently still at that place of in the old job and looking for something new. Unconscious um, is something that's maybe around us that we're not so much conscious about just now, um, and we have um, Ren de Baton, which is the Queen of Wands, Queen of Batons, um, so to me this is... Uh, Either someone around about the person, or it, it, it's talking about qualities that that person has themselves. And this is someone who has a lot of charisma, you know. When they walk into a room, all heads turn. Everyone wants to know what that person's got to say, what they're going to do. This is someone who's really interesting and that, you know, has a warm personality and naturally catches people's attention. Okay, so maybe there's someone like that around about the person who can help them, or maybe these are qualities that are kind of a, just buried a bit deeper down in this person and that they need to awaken. Okay, the next four cards we're going to look at are going to be the, the, the advice cards, I like to call them. Um, and by the way, if you're wondering what where this spread has come from, this spread I got from the guidebook for the Raven's Prophecy Tarot. So it's the 10 card spread and the Raven's Prophecy Tarot guidebook. I might have changed these a bit, I'm not sure, um, but apart from that. So the next card is going to tell us what the person thinks they should do, okay? So this is what this person's kind of instinct is to do, and I mean, we see the Ace of Wands, to me that is, you know, it's about a change of career, it's about a change of purpose, you know, um, it's about a, a new kind of an inspiration and a new path, so we know that this person has identified that they, they want to kind of a move on and maybe, um, you know, change their career path, so, so that makes sense to come up. The next card is what does that person think they shouldn't do? Okay, what do they not think they should do um, in order to progress? So, we see the Wheel of Fortune, okay? Now, we could take this in a few different ways, I guess. Um, for me, the Wheel of Fortune talks about that. So, I've maybe got a bit of a different view of this card than what some people do. Um, I look at justice as being about cause and effect, you know? Um, for me, the Justice card is the card that comes up when we need to think about the actions that we're taking um, and think about the consequences. The Wheel of Fortune, on the other hand, is pure chaos. Uh, it's Fortuna. You know, it's the Wheel of Fortu the Goddess Fortuna. And Fortuna basically serves no one, favours no one. You know, whether you're a king or whether you're a peasant or whatever you are, Fortuna doesn't care, okay, and it's not about fairness when it comes to the Wheel of Fortune, and for unfortunately, <laughs> it's about, it, it. well, that's it, it's pure chaos, it, it doesn't really, there's, there's no fairness in it, so you can be at the top of that wheel, you can be at the bottom, at some point Fortuna is going to come along and turn that wheel, you know, but what it does say is that everyone gets their chance, you know, everyone is somewhere on the wheel and when you kind of a um if you want to get into maybe a bit more of a esoteric point of view the the i suppose the the track of the wheel of fortune is to not try and clamber your way to the top it's actually getting to the center of the wheel where you don't feel the turn as much and the center of the wheel represents a place of spiritual enlightenment okay that's just for the you know for for those of us who, who like a bit of esoteric kind of stuff i um, i think so in terms of what not to do i i think that this person is thinking well i can't just wait for the right thing to come along you know i need to take some sort of action Okay, I do need to grab this bull by the horns and I need to do something, which is good because when we were looking at that Valley of Cups, you know, you, you kind of get the impression maybe the person is waiting for that for that amazing fish to jump out of the cup for that opportunity to just happen along. Whereas here we see, you no, know, actually they, they do want to kind of take control. This isn't what, 
you know, they, they don't want to just wait for some fortunate happenstance to happen and for them to get something. They're willing to take action. Okay. The next two cards are quite so quite similar but quite different. So the next two cards are what the cards are saying you should do and you shouldn't do. So it's interesting to compare them to these two. So this is what the querent thinks they should and shouldn't do. The next two cards are what you know what you should and shouldn't do or what the cards are saying you should and shouldn't do. So let's see what comes up. So what you should do. So we've got the six of swords. Okay. So this maybe suggests that in order to get to where they want to be, in order to progress, this person maybe needs to remove themselves from a certain type of situation. Now this could be a, a physical move that they need to carry out or probably more likely in this case it's more of a headspace type thing. It's more saying they need to get themselves into a certain type of headspace before they'll be re before they'll be ready to actually take on this new challenge and before they're going to be appealing to you know people who want to um to, 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 to take them on you know as a worker and what should you not do so that's interesting we've got the the ace of swords okay so I, I, the way that i would read that is this isn't about a completely new intellectual endeavor think about you the skills that you already have this isn't the time for like you know if you've been working in finance all your life to then go and be a swimming instructor it's not the time to take on a completely new challenge you need to think about the skills that you've amassed and you need to be applying for work that are where what you already know is going to be applicable to it's going to help you you know, so think about transferable skills. It's not saying that you need to work in the exact same type of setting, but think about transferable skills. Think about the skills that you've already amassed and how can you use them to your advantage to get to progress, to get to where you want to be. Okay. So it's interesting that we have two aces here and one of them is well, what does the person think they should do? And the other one is what are the cards telling them they shouldn't do? Um so that that might be a bit of an indicator to me that this person needs to maybe um, reevaluate their situation um, and look at things a wee bit differently. Okay. Um, the next two cards or the final two cards um, are so the next one is immediate future. I guess it's kind of a what's happening next. Where is you know what's what's the immediate future um, that this is leading to. Okay, now for us, we've got another ace coming up. We've got the ace of pentacles. So we do see a new start coming up for them. So regardless of, you know, well, not regardless, because this is kind of a taking all of this into account, we do see this new beginning, this new start coming up, this new, excuse me, new opportunity, which is, you know, when we think about what we're reading for, is really reassuring. Um, and it would be a, it would be a confidence boost for this person, and then the last card is kind of a, like the final outcome, um, and we have the seven of pentacles. So to me, this is like saying, if we look at this as kind of a wild card, I guess it's like we need to wait for the right time. Okay, it it's kind of a like um, baking a loaf of bread, or it's about growing something from the ground. You can't just try and harvest that whenever you want you need to wait until the right time you need to wait until that's ready so and applying it to this reading this person really needs to wait until they're ready and until you know the the the, the job market i suppose is ready um to take them on um so it's about waiting until the time is right you know picking your time i think is what this is saying um let's look and see what card jumped out we had the five of pentacles, right, okay. Um, so maybe this is just kind of an indicative of the person's kind of where they currently are. Um, you know, the, as I said, the person's about just ready for something new. They're ready to move on. They're ready for a change, which is kind of a, what the five sometimes indicate. Um, five of pentacles can be a bit of a tough card. Um, and, you know, that can be for various reasons. Sometimes it indicates financial hardship. Um, sometimes it, it's basically... Um, question it makes you question the value of things okay so it's like you've got so far in your life where you're valuing things based you know you're valuing stuff okay and the, the, you know the pentacles suit 
um, does talk a lot about stuff. It's the material realm, you know, mate your material world around about you. But the five is what kind of a causes you to question your value in that stuff. And it's maybe asking you to um, place a bit more value in what's inside you, you know. Um, it's kind of a, like somebody turning around and saying to you, well, home is where the heart is. It's that kind of a type thing. You know, it's not about having a big fancy mansion with, you know, secret hidey places and all that kind of a thing. You know, secret rooms behind bookcases and that. Um, it, you know, it's about being in a place where you're actually happy. Okay, so this shift in your values is what sometimes the, the Five of Pence looks at. Um, and this could just be like kind of aware this person is and what this whole process would represent for them, you know, the process of looking for and finding something new. They might find that, you know, what they're looking for or, you know, what they value in a job will actually change. Okay. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, like I say, I will stick a link in the description to where you can purchase the um, Taro Gelato um, from Mendy's Make Playing Cards um, website. So please pop on over if you're interested and have a look. Um, until next time, I hope that you all have an amazing week. Uh, take care. I'll speak to you all later. Bye-bye.